Sometimes all predictions are gold. In this video, I will show you how to keep your infrastructure small by leveraging the power of all but the still relevant predictions. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. So, you know, sometimes when you work with, for example, with a large company, with a corporation, they, there is a common pattern where they tell you, you know, like, we build this massive infrastructure that can scale to any process and that is consists of a cluster, on a distributed cluster of computers, and we want you to use this infrastructure to support the AI use case so we can predict things super fast and we can, you know, always keep processing the latest and data that we have to support our use case, okay? So there is this tendency to build super large infrastructures just to allow the models to, you know, scale up fast, okay? And, you know, sometimes people ignore this trade-off between the cost of your infrastructure and how useful the, on the size of the opportunity that this use case is solving, okay? And how, re how relevant is actually to make this AI use case scale up to with this with this baseline infrastructure. By the way, if you don't know how to compute the size of an opportunity of an AI opportunity, I will leave a link below with a free preview of our Data in AI course where you will learn how to that, how to know what is the size of any opportunity in AI, okay? So the pattern that we have worked on and that I summarize on this video is known as the old but gold predictions, okay? So what is this pattern? In this pattern, basically you need to make predictions and you know which predictions you will have to make. For example, you know that you want to make predictions about your customer base tomorrow, okay? Or you know that you will make predictions for your recurring users, okay? So these are known predictions. You know that you will have to predict the stocks tomorrow for these tickets, okay? So for these tickers. So you know the range of predictions that you have to, to do in the next day, in the next week, in the next month. At least most of them are properly known. So instead of computing the predictions on demand when people make them, you compute them, uh, you pre-compute your predictions, okay? And you store these predictions in a table, okay? Why is this relevant? Because then the next time that people, you know, ask you for a prediction, let's say the prediction of whether uh, Mary uh, will buy a product or not, or which products will Mary uh, buy tomorrow, I already have this table here that basically tells me like the top three products for Mary are product A, D, and F, okay? I know these predictions maybe are already outdated and do not take into account the latest changes on Mary profile. But sometimes it's already good enough and, you know, we can pre-compute these and already have them stored, okay? So, even if these predictions are relatively outdated, they can still be relevant. And then the pattern consists on keep improving, keep iteratively recycling these predictions and recomputing them incrementally, okay? At a pace that is most likely lower than the, than the speed of the predictions that you have to generate. So instead of having an infrastructure that can reproduce this table, this entire table every day, maybe you have an infrastructure that can only reproduce it every week, okay? So the, if you keep a smaller infrastructure, you will be dealing with all the predictions. If you have a massive infrastructure that can generate all predictions quite fast, then you will be re lowering the latency or the lag of these predictions, okay? So here you will have a trade-off between how recent are the predictions or how relevant are they from the current situation and how much is the cost of making that, those predictions, okay? How can you update these predictions? So there are different patterns. One is uh, you keep, you update the oldest one, okay? The oldest one, okay? So basically you go like this, okay? From top to bottom of the table, and then you do it and you repeat it uh, over and over again. So you will go always with the, with the always prediction that hasn't been updated for, for a long time. The other one is, you know, sometimes, for example, if you are dealing about your customer base, maybe you have new customers, okay? So whenever you have a new customer, you start by predicting those, these ones here, and then you move to the oldest one. So you can combine, let's go give higher priority to the cases that do not have any prediction and then to the ones that are the older ones. And this is the second one, which is uh, the new ones. And then the third one is basically, you go for the most active ones, okay? For the most active. So basically you keep like a count of how many times a prediction has been asked, you know? And for the cases with a very high uh, 
prediction frequency, you try to update them more. Because these are, for example, your top clients that are always asking for recommendations. Or these are your hottest areas in the market where you want to adapt, you know, faster, okay? So basically, this is a fair approach. It's one of the ones I use the most, which is, you know, to go first for the cases that are hot without forgetting the, the old ones. Because the old ones and the ones that have, haven't been updated for all for a long time can, you know, be ignored if you always go for the top ones. But it's a good trade-off here where you can you know, have relevant predictions for the 20% of your customer base that brings the 80% of your value and then you know keep updating the other ones in case they, they ask you again for a prediction. Okay, so remember if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And now where I will show you when can you use this strategy as a business and basically you have two scenarios. You can use it first of all on domains that adapt slowly, okay? For example, real estate is something that do not adapt like constantly, okay? Or for example, short sure prediction, okay? Your clients are not like super uh, volatile in a sense that they, they are not changing their mind every second, okay? So if I predict the probability of short sure for a client next month, uh, it's most likely the same, you know, the month after that and the one after that, or for tomorrow versus next week. So clients are not, you know, changing their mind every day. So these are use cases where most likely you will be okay with not having the, the prediction with the latest information and where you can account for some lag. So remember when your business changes slowly. And the second one is for non-critical tasks, okay? So when whenever an outdated prediction will be still relevant or more relevant than not having a prediction at all or having you know a high cost, then for example, you can for sure um, give these kinds of recommendations, for example, on a newsletter, okay? For example, if you're sending a recommendation on a newsletter, maybe you don't need the up-to-date prediction, you know, with all the clicks that the user made, maybe you're okay with the prediction that was generated two or three days ago on that newsletter, but on the website where you want to account for the session data, you know, which uh, flat, which objects the user already click in this session, maybe there you do want to have real-time predictions because you want to have, you know, relative, uh, semantically relevant predictions for your customers real time for in the in the newsletter you are okay we generate predictions based on the clicks that the user made last week for example the users will tend to accept it okay so there is this trade-off always in in this all but gold use cases that you need to uh, to ask yourself where you are which is you know we have the different the infrastructure cost okay so this is dollars the size of the infrastructure your infrastructure and as you increase the size of your infrastructure you will reduce the lag of your predictions, okay? Basically, you will be dealing with predictions that are more, more up-to-date, okay? That are more recent. But, um, of course, as you, as you increase the size of your infrastructure, of course, you will increase, increase your predictive power, okay? Predictive power. Okay, this is accuracy, this is whatever you want to know okay so of course more re more recent predictions will be more relevant but it will cost you more so the trade-off that you need to understand here is what is the size of your infrastructure here where your predictions are still relevant in a, in a way that they can generate enough money Ide ideally much more money than the cost of your infrastructure okay this is the trade-off you need to, to answer and this, this strategy will allow you to start with a very small infrastructure with delayed predictions and then increase the size of your infrastructure as you start getting money out of it. So you can actually reinvest the cash flow you are generating from your outdated predictions into building a, a better and higher infrastructure instead of investing a lot of money on building in these massive distributed clusters to support a news case that most likely or very likely will never reach, uh, will never break even on the size of the infrastructure that you built. Okay, so I will highly recommend you to follow this advice if you want to build AI use cases with minimal risk. Okay, if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and activate the notifications. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye.